Hello friends, welcome to Ashtek channel. This is Osan Naik from Ashtek channel. So today we will see memory cycle times and weight states. So to access external device, CPU provides fixed amount of time that is called as bus cycle. To access an external device, CPU provides fixed amount of time that is called as bus cycle. So what is that memory cycle time? Memory cycle time is the memory read cycle time. The time it takes to read from memory. So in 8086 and 8088 it is 4 clock cycles. That is nothing but 1 by cycle. From 286 to Pentium, 2 clock cycle. If the memory is slow and its access time doesn't match the memory cycle time of the CPU, extra time can be requested from the CPU to extend the read cycle time. This extra time is called as wait state. So here you can see one bus cycle is a 4 clock cycle. In this clock cycle, first address is placed on the address bus. So 20 bit address is placed. That's why here you can see 16 bit address and here it is a 4 bit. Total 20 bit address is placed. So once the address is placed on the address bus, then read signal goes like this. Here you can see read bar. When read bar goes low, read bar is active low signal goes low. Then read is activated and data is read from the memory. Similarly, for write also they will ask sometimes. So for write also, you have to draw the line something like this only. For write also, you have to draw something like this only. In that case, this becomes a right, right signal. This is reading data from memory. This is writing data to the memory. So this is the memory cycle diagram for 8086. One bus clock cycle means four, uh, bus cycle means four clock cycles. Initially address is placed on the address bus, 20 bit address, 16 bit address and 24 bit address here. Once the address is uh, placed, uh, address is decoded, uh, then it is ready to ac accept the data from the memory. During that uh, time, uh, you can see here, uh, read signal goes slow and uh, data is read from the memory during this time. Similarly, write also, write also takes place in the similar way. Now factors in slowing down the CPU, memory access time and the delay associated with the signal going through the data and address path. This is the factor slowing down the CPU. One is the memory access time, second one is the delay associated with the signal going through the data and the address path. Delay associated with the reading data stored in the memory has the two components. First the time taken for the address signal to go from CPU pin to memory pin through decoder, buffers etc. Plus the time taken for the uh, for time taken for the data to travel from memory to CPU is referred as part delay. So you can see here uh, memory access time and the part delay. So memory access time to get the data out of the memory chip is uh, this is larger than 80% of the read cycle time for the two components. Uh, the total sum of the the total sum of these two is one is part delay and the memory access time. Part delay is the time taken to travel the signal from the CPU to memory through decoders, buffers, all these are called as part delay. So, total sum of this uh, two is part delay plus uh, memory, ac uh, memory access uh, time. This is called as memory read cycle time. This is called as a memory read cycle time. So now calculator, you can see here. 
calculate the time memory cycle time for 20 megahertz 386 system 386 system bus cycle is equal to clock cycle with zero wait state one wait state two wait states first you have to find out the frequency frequency is equal to 1 by 20 megahertz 50 nanosecond 50 nanosecond so now zero wait state means 50 nanoseconds into 2 2 clocks that is 100 nanosecond one wait state is 1 second 50 nanosecond you have to add that is 150 nanosecond two wait state means 50 plus 50 this is not 500 50 plus 50 plus 100 as usual because 100 is nothing but 100 is nothing but two clocks and this is weight weight cycle weight cycle so two weights means 50 plus 50 and two clocks because two clocks uh, it is uh, 386 system. Suppose if they ask about uh, 8086, uh, then it is a uh, it is a f uh, f uh, this one uh, four cycles. Four cycles means uh, you have to four into fifty. You have to multiply four into fifty. So that time it becomes uh, four into fifty two hundred. Two hundred plus weight. So in the exam they may ask uh, four eighty uh, sorry eight, eight zero eighty six. So please remember. Uh, this is a 386 machine. 386 machine, 286 machine onwards, it is a two clock cycle. One memory cycle means, one bus cycle means two clocks. Two clocks. So, this is memory cycle time is equal to this one. Please try to understand. So, I repeat, suppose if they ask about 8086, then one bus cycle, one bus cycle is equal to four clock cycle four clock cycle so what you have to do same problem here it this becomes uh, four into fifty that is two hundred now this is two hundred and here it is two hundred plus uh, fifty here it is two hundred plus uh, hundred uh, three hundred so in that is in the case of uh, eight zero eight six but 286 onwards, uh, one bus clock cycle, one bus cycle is equal to two clocks. Uh, so you have to calculate like this. So one more problem is there. I will give this as assignment. Please go through it. In case if you have doubt, you can message me. One more parameter related to the bus is bus bandwidth. The main advantage of bandwidth is uh, you consider 8085, it is 8 bit. In 8086, 16 uh, bit data bus, double the data transfer rate. The rate of data transfer is generally called as bus bandwidth. Bus bandwidth is a measure of how fast buses transfer information between CPU and memory. Advantage of wider external data bus becomes uh, 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 gives uh, higher data transfer rate, but the cost of increasing size of the printed circuit board also, PCB also. The, it means it will increase the cost of uh, uh, the PCB design. So printed circuit board design. So bus bandwidth is normally calculated by the formula one divided by bus cycle time into bus width in bytes. Please remember. 1 by bus cycle time that is bus cycle time into bus width in bytes. So now we will see this one with the help of one problem. So calculate the memory bus bandwidth for the following microprocessor with the speed 20 megahertz, 286 with the 0 weight state and 1 weight state for 16 bit data bus. 286 with 0 weight state and 1 weight state. Now 286 uh, and 386 uh, we know uh, this one is uh, uh, bus cycle is 2 clocks. I told you bus cycle is 2 clocks. 2 clocks means uh, 2 clocks uh, with the 0 weight states. Now with the 20 megahertz bus speed uh, we have bus clock is uh, 50 nanosecond. Now what is the bandwidth? Bandwidth is 1 divided by 2 clocks into 50 nanosecond. This one 50 nanosecond. We have to we have to use the formula. Bus cycle time. So 2 clocks into 50 nanosecond. That is and 2 bytes 2 bytes means 16 bit width of the bus 16 bit 2 bytes 
that gives us 20 megabytes per second transmission rate. If with one wait state, uh, one wait state, this becomes a three clock cycle here. That is three clock cycle means one divided by 150 nanosecond uh, and into two bytes. Uh, once again, uh, 33.3 mega, uh, this one megabytes per second. You can see wait with the wait state, uh, the data transfer will decreases. Similarly, we will take now 386. 386 is a 32 bit. Three, Three eighty six is a three eighty six is a thirty two bit data bus. So now thirty two bit data bus. Rest of the things are remain same. Here instead of two bytes, it is four bytes. Then that means exactly double twenty mega. Oh sorry, forty megabytes. Transfer rate. With this 32 bit, uh, this one, uh, the data transfer bits will increases to 26.6.